Play on Dennis Miller. You know, sometimes I stand here looking out at all those people and I can't help but wonder, what are, what are their lives like? Do you ever think that? Just to backdrop, Dennis, there are no people out there. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> Welcome to the show. How you doing, Nick? Okay. Goldie? What's up, boys? You okay, pal? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, it's that cyclical thing, man. I get wild, and I kind of bum out. Uh, I love that about you. Yeah, that's my duality that's such a turn-on. Hey, um, <laughs> what's in the news, kids? Jerry Brown said today that after his uh, win in Maine, he should be considered the sleeper of the Democratic race. Of course, Bill Clinton is still considered the sleeper around of the Democratic race. <laughs> After tying with Songas in the main caucus, Jerry Brown said to reporters, now maybe you guys will take me seriously. And everybody laughed. <laughs> because of GM's catastrophic losses, oh, this, this rips my guts out, retired chairman Roger Smith's pension has been trimmed from $1.2 million to $1 million a year. Aww. Aww. Yeah, times are tough all over. He might have to fire the lady who comes in once a week to dust the left side of his scrotum. Yeah. Yeah. You're damn right. We're coming for you, Roger. <laughs> Not to be confused with the girl who comes in to do the right side. But he only gets the right side done once every two weeks. Uh, it's his kink. <laughs> Melda Marcos said today that she has accepted the Philippine government's conditions for returning her husband's body, and she said she was very glad she kept her receipt. <laughs> you gotta do that. Melda has been given permission to bury her husband in the Philippines. She was seen out last night trying to steal a headstone. And... Uh, <laughs> the Grammys are tonight. Yeah, that's exciting. Whoopi's gonna host. You know, Michael Jackson has won the most Grammy Awards in one year. How many? Eight, exactly. And uh, he also is the only person ever to accept an award for himself as somebody else. <laughs> uh, the Elvis stamps are coming out. See this? They have two Elvis stamps, one young Elvis, and then they have a more mature Elvis. They were unveiled by the post office yesterday, and we get to pick by vote which one we want them to use. I'm gonna vote for the one that still has bladder control. But uh, I look for that in the stamp, you know. I... China has come out with a new handgun that is also a bottle opener. Oh, those clever Chinese. <laughs> hey, after a hard day of murdering pro-democracy demonstrators, it's Miller time! <laughs> President Bush is pushing to ease restraints on gene-altering projects. Bush said, hey, I like mutants. I'm running for re-election with one, aren't I? Tastes great. 
quail job. Come on. All right, everybody's on daddy's good side. I like Dan Quayle. I just, I think a quail is like uh, Dan Tana's assistant Binzer on Vegas, you know? Yeah. You let him answer the phone, but he's not drive the T-Bird. Bush, uh, Bush is against... Hey, I just rethought my position on quail. I like him, too. <laughs> Bush is against taxing the rich to give the middle class a break. I guess the rich are suffering, too. You know, a lot of them had to close their auto plants recently. Uh, I'm very excited to hear that the new female condom will be ready this fall. Yeah, sex is fun, huh? So now she puts on hers, he puts on his. You do a little blood work, check each other with a Geiger counter. Bam, here you go. <laughs> See this? The number of visitors to national parks dropped by 20% last year. However, the number of people living in national parks went up by a whopping 200%. So, kind of a compensatory thing. The, uh... okay, he will sleep till noon, but before he starts, he'll have every single basket that's in jelly stone. Hey, boo. There you go. What was Quick Draw McGraw's sadistic cousin with the guitar? El Cabon. El Cabon. Of course. Expressing his Latin blood. El Cabon. Anybody remember that? Yeah. I've heard theories of a second Cabong man. Uh, Apple Computer said today that it made a breakthrough that will let its computer listen to you when you talk. Apple's uh, toying with a Lady Macintosh that listens to you but then tells you what a jerk you are right after you finish. <laughs> and President F.W. de Klerk of South Africa announced a whites-only vote on ending apartheid. Man, this guy makes David Duke look like David Duke. <laughs> Ted Kennedy turned 60 over the weekend. Friends and family plan to honor him with a cake with uh, 60 candles on it, one for each major mistake he's made in his life. <laughs> and finally, uh, two bartenders are suing each other over the right to take credit for teaching Tom Cruise his flashy moves in the 1988 movie Cocktail. The case will be decided in a California court and the winner will be awarded a life. <laughs> Okay, we've got a good show for you tonight. Uh, you seem a little reluctant tonight. You okay? Everybody all right? Want me to hug you? Okay. Come on now. we got a good show for you tonight. We have uh, the delightful Billy Conley is here. And... Uh, Formerly was in Cirque du Soleil. I think he's uh, left Cirque du Soleil for Las Vegas now, as I understand. I can't think of two more <laughs> antithetical places on earth than there, but uh, he is the, you ever see Cirque du Soleil, the big guy on the bungee cords, the, uh... yeah. yeah, Vladimir is here. He's going to do his, uh... Vladimir and the Bungee Cord. Sounds like a band at CBGB Umfug. Uh, Mario and Melvin Van Peebles are here. And uh, lastly, a, uh, a man who does a uh, film every seven years amongst other projects. He's multi-talented, but he does the uh, 2835 Up series. Uh, brilliant film. I saw it the other night. Michael Apted is here. And you're here, old Goldie. Thank you. Of the Dennis Miller Show is brought to you by Bounce. It stops static before static stops you. commanded some respect there. I felt like Mr. Spacely in the lunchroom at Spacely Sprocket. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know what my biggest fear about being a talk show is, Nick? Being a talk show host? That if, the, uh, if an earthquake hits while we're, we're on air or taping, I know I'll be such a wussy. I'll be under this desk. 
and they'll run that film on CNN all night. <laughs> Everybody will know. Uh, hey, if you've been watching the show diligently over the last few weeks, you may have noticed I uh, got my locks trimmed, low hair cut quaff. As a result, hey, the topic of tonight's case for and against is uh, haircuts. Case for haircuts, a professional stylist makes sure your sideburns are symmetrical. Against, obsessed with perfection, he runs them up the side of your cranium. <laughs> Case four, the classic page boy. Against, the classic shampoo boy. <laughs> but case four, your stylist promises a happening look. Against, he's finishing up Jack Lord. <laughs> Case four, men gather and talk about manly subjects. Against, sadly, they don't consider you one of them. <laughs> Some hairdressers are great raconteurs. Against, how many times can you hear the one about how Raymond once chased him naked down Beverly Drive with a steak knife? <laughs> no, I love that joke, huh? Did I deliver that wrong? Oh, that's a good joke. Case four, you ask for something different. Against, you look like a character from Hellraiser. <laughs> the case four, a good stylist can help conceal your hair loss. Against, that's what they told Dick Van Patten. <laughs> And finally, Pavlov, the uh, case for haircuts, the warm air from the blow dryer as it hits your neck is quite soothing. Against the look of horror on your face when you suddenly notice his unplugged blow dryer on the table in front of you. <laughs> upstream here. What is this? Oh, look. It's uh, Jinky the Fruit Bat's new book. Can you get in on that? Story of Jinky's earlier life called Bat Like Me. And uh, Jinky will be on pitching this. Was this for later? Okay, jump my cue. All right. Uh, this is a whole timing thing. All right, let's get Billy out here. He can saddle up with the... Uh, my first guest has been making European audiences laugh. For 25 years, I didn't know this cat was this old. He uh, played Billy Conley, and head of the class, and he's now playing the same character in the new ABC sitcom, Billy. Please welcome Billy Conley, folks. Billy. <laughs> What are you digging, man? You looking to play so? Brilliant set. Yeah, you I like love this it. Well, look at it. This is. I love this. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't even know what's out there. I always it's sit so back little here. Woody designs. It's a bit. <laughs> oh boy, it's, it's pretty neat, isn't it? Second most interesting pattern on this stage. Uh, <laughs> geez, making pro golfers look like bankers, there, Bill. <laughs> It's uh, the, 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 there's trousers too. It's a suit, but I thought it would be a bit overpowering. I, I, uh, oh, there is it. pants to that? Yeah. Jesus, why did you have to leave them out at the end of the runway? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant, you know. It comes with a sort of volume control. It's really good. Yeah. I love it. That just, it's great. Now, is that your, uh, you're from Scotland, right? Is I'm that like your... It's good to wear stuff that you don't look like an American, you know. It's nice to look European, and I feel... Very European and yeah, this. I see something from each nation on the Absolutely. European. <laughs> see, there's, it's great. I mean, being in America is lovely, and it's and it's an ambition of mine to be here and all that stuff. But it's nice not to look like an American, also. Yeah. You know. Well, hey, now you're 49. I just. Read. I'm 49. Gee. And Take care of yourself, man. You look good. I've actually ravaged myself for many <laughs> years, <laughs> and I would advise everybody to do it. You know. Okay. I have had yeah. I've been, I've been very clean for a long... I, I was never a druggy kind of guy, you know, I could never... I, I tried, God knows I tried. <laughs> but I could never do it, you know, some guys could have drugs and do things, you like know. Like shop. I, yeah. <laughs> I 
could never do it. I, I would I would smoke dope and then just lie like a, I, I've been with women, you know, who who liked me and wanted me to pay attention to them when I couldn't get my hand on them. <laughs> You know that brain thing, you're going, go, go. Yeah. So I, I, but I drank, I drank for many, many happy years. I was a, I was a drunk all the time. It was brilliant, you know? Yeah. And then it got awful, and so I stopped. But while it wasn't awful, it was wonderful. And now, now I don't drink at all. I don't do any of those things. And this is good. Yeah, now you've gone to the other end of the Yeah, thing. and it infuriated the journalists in Britain because they were predicting my sort of death and stuff. So, God, look at it. He's a lush, he's a drunk. And then you come out of it looking younger than them. They yeah. get so pissed. They were hoping for the Keith Moon of comedy. Yes, and, and uh, Keith Moon infuriates them. They keep predicting his death, and he's older than most of them. It's brilliant. I love it. I, I, Keith do it. Moon is older than most of them? Yeah, he's older than most of the journalists who write about... Oh, no, well, Keith Moon, I thought you meant Keith Richards. Oh, you scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Boy, I was going to cancel Keith my Rolling Moon, Stone yeah. for... <laughs> he was yeah, nice Keith Moon, he, uh... Well, he looks trim. Uh... <laughs> he's losing a lot of weight. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Billy Conley, folks, after this. Oh, he's scared to Billy Conley. Um, now, just from the first segment with you, I can tell that you say you speak your mind. And uh, what what's your thoughts on? Uh, you did stand up in England, right? Or, yeah, yeah. I speak what's left of my mind. Yeah. <laughs> what sta stand up in England must be brutal, though. The crowds and those. It's very, beer very halls good. Are... It's really, it's really nice. See, I came through that folk music way, and into concerts. So I didn't do all that uh, clubby stuff. You know that uh, comedy club. Where are you from? Sort of bull. I've never done that stuff. <laughs> you know, I've never liked that kind of. Yeah. You know, it, it, it seems old fashioned to me. End of the pier, you know, hey, where are you from? Blah, blah. <laughs> I don't like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But th they're a good audience. They're nice people. They're good. They listen a lot, you know, and they, they like Americans very much. That, as a matter of fact, Americans are kind of sweeping the board. There's a school of English comedy that's, you know, all based on John Cleese and all those guys. It kind of drifts down a wee bit. The college boys smart-ass comedy, but the ones they really like are the wild Americans, you know, like, uh, Robin's very big, Robin Williams, but the Sam Kinison, stuff like that, goes down very well indeed. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think of guys like Kinison and Clay? I think he's great. I, I like Sam Kinison, it's very funny. I've seen very little, because I don't really watch other guys, you know. I, uh, you don't I, like them getting in your head? Or? I steal, no, I, I steal all the stuff. Yeah? Yeah, three, three months later it comes trotting out, it sounds like my own idea. It just, you know, you read and, and listen to all these guys and it all comes burbling along, you know. I notice you're doing Sam's accent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like him very much. And who's that other wild man? Dice. Um, Andrew Dice Clay. I like him. I don't see much of Dice. What's happening? I've never him? seen his act very much. I've only seen wee bits of him. But I judge him by the people who don't like him. If they don't like him, I like him. You know, there's a lot of guys, a lot of very unfunny guys on television telling you what funny is. And, and they're always against him. I like him. And I, I think they're really jealous because he can fill Madison Square Garden and all that. Yeah. Two shows in a row, as a matter of fact, 40,000 people. Yeah, I think people get insanely jealous. They get consumed with envy about people who can do that. Right. And I think it's brilliant to watch him do it. I, th I think he's sexist and he's racist and all these things, but I don't really care much, you know. <laughs> you know? It's a uh, loose approach. You see, there's a lot... Race, racism and sexism, there's, there are very good sexy jokes. There are, and if you, the, the Jewish comedians have taught us all how to be racist with taste, you know. You can be racist about yourself, you can be racist about... And sometimes, oh God, I'm in real deep water here. Sometimes it can be very, very observant, a racist joke. Sometimes it can make a great observation. And, and you know, it shouldn't all be sort of brought down. There's a lot of people who think that social workers, no racism, no sexism, no sexism, no this, no that, no animals, no bloody this, no that. And, I, you know, it's nice to see somebody being wild and alive. See, I watch, look at the real people in, on American television. I watch those people in the morning on Oprah Winfrey and Geraldo. 
people are all lunatics. <laughs> people with their children. You know, you see those people come on with, with their own kids. You'll have the wife here, the husband there, and this thing in the middle, chewing <laughs> with a baseball hat on backwards. <laughs> He's making their life a misery, and nobody hits him. That is the answer. <laughs> I gotta shake your hand for digging out of that racist hole, man. <laughs> I was thinking, where the hell is where he is going he? here? I was thinking it All of a sudden, they're applauding, man. That is the Houdini water no, torture thing. No, it's just thing. to see. Yeah. You see, there is such a difference between doing things live and doing them on TV, you know, because you're actually in people's living rooms. But you see, that's where this awful dichotomy happens. These families go on, these screwed up weird people. And then they, they stick some psychiatrist that nobody's ever heard of <laughs> over here. And she says, he's got dysfunctional written all over him. He's got ass <laughs> There's a clarity of thought bred out there on the Scottish moors. That see, cold wind comes in. And... See if the father says, well, I disagree. She goes, he's in denial. They've got all these weird answers. You know, you can't win. Nobody, see, violence can be very good. Violence can be, no. Let's watch them get out of this one. In politics, I'm a firm believer that there are far too many nuclear weapons and not enough politicians being smacked in the mouth. You see them? You see them interviewed on CNN? They're nice. They're nice to David Duke. You know, Mr. Duke, you were a racist. How do you, how do you feel about that now? You, you said all these things about the Jews. How do you feel about that now? Oh, I don't feel like that anymore. Tell me. Uh, uh, you know, you know, we got to go see Vladimir. we got to go over and see Vladimir, but, you know, David Duke Fucking could be no worse, violence. man. He could be wearing a sheet with this pattern. Okay. <laughs> we're going to go see Vladimir. Oh, my hand mic. Whoops, sorry. And we're going to take the whole crowd over here to see Vladimir, because we couldn't do it in this studio, so we're going to go over this way. I've got my staff. Follow me, my children. <laughs> over here. Billy, I got you a flute, man. You're from Scotland. Play something. Let's bring these people over here. Uh, everybody, come on over. I'm going to go see Vladimir. Well, we got to bring him quickly. Come on now. Bring him over here. All right. This is the camera crew. <laughs> I feel like Ilya Kerry Arkin here in the hallway. Go see Mr. Waverly. <laughs> Billy, you're beautiful back there. All right. Well, let me watch this. I'm going to cast it down. Wow. No snake. We're in a recession. All right. Now we're next door. We've got a bigger studio here. We're going to be right back. That's Vladimir over my shoulder. We're going to take a commercial and uh, stick around for this. This is amazing. Vladimir, right after this, folks. We'll be right back. This portion of the Dennis Miller Show is brought to you by Mars. Mars, making life a little sweeter. 